Hello and welcome to another special edition of the Offside Museums podcast. My name is Oke Ndibe and it's my delight um, to welcome you on behalf of my co-host Emeka Onyagwa. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to be looking at continuing fallout from the 2023 general elections, especially the presidential elections. We're going to x-ray the EU's take um, on the elections as well as sort of how things are going in court. We're also going to look at uh, Bolatinubu's first outing uh, at an international um, gathering of leaders uh, in Paris, France. So we welcome you and we're excited. So, you know, so I, I think, I think um, the first place to start naturally, I think, will be uh, the report that the EU uh, just issued um, where they express grave misgivings about aspects of the conduct of the 2023 elections, uh, particularly the fact, uh, as I said, that INEC um, did not conduct that election in a way that would inspire uh, public confidence and um, a kind of acceptability of the outcome of that election because of um, the absence of polling unit um, uh, release of the results in so many, many polling units. And of course, the alleged glitches that um, basically occurred and ultimately undermined the uploads of the results of the presidential presidential elections as they should have happened. Um, we have uh, paid attention to, to this development uh, in several episodes so far. Um, it's interesting that um, the EU has pointed to, to this uh, lapse. And you can see that even in the uh, overwhelmingly negative uh, report that they offered, that they are still um, struggling mightily to be, as it were, polite to Nigeria. Um, so the EU stopped short of saying to INEC, um, you basically threw this election, you rigged this election. And I think that... Um, you know, the case is going on in court. Uh, the presidential uh, el electoral petition uh, is in court. Um, the uh, two plaintiffs, uh, the Labour Party and the PDP, the two at least major plaintiffs, have um, essentially closed their cases. Okay. So in the next week or so, when the case reopens, we're going to be hearing from INEC and the APC and Bolame Tinubu uh, to see how they justify uh, the victory that was called for, for Tinubu as the president elect and ultimately uh, Nigeria's putative president. Um, I think that they, the way that the European Union has called this it should be sobering for all Nigerians, okay? Um, because the European Union sent observers to the elections. Those observers pretty much were able to circulate only in certain urban areas that, that were well policed. Much of the rigging and much of the um, hanky-panky that occurred in that election uh, occurred outside of the purview of electoral observers, especially international electoral observers. But even so, the EU was able to remark on the substantial inability, and I will not say it was inability, I think it's substantial um, unwillingness of INEC officials to play the rules as the electoral act. Um, 
suggests that they should play, not just suggest, but in fact uh, stipulates that they should that they should play it. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I was looking at uh, the response of the INEC uh, spokesman. Um, a really um, what I what I would call shameless response uh, by Festus Okoye, who is the spokesman for INEC, and I'm going to. Um, read a little bit. INEC spokesman Festus Okoye said it is not true that political parties did not have primary evidence of the election results from the polling units. INEC National Commissioner Festus Okoye responded to the European Union Election Observation Mission's final report on the 2023 general elections. He cautioned against judging the entire performance of the Electoral Commission based on a glitch in the result upload for the presidential election. Okoye highlighted that political parties had primary evidence of the results from the polling units through their nominated and accredited polling agents. Well, you know what? In a lot of cases, that was true. And so the case that is before the tribunal now is essentially that those polling unit results that party agents obtained in so many different units did not reflect the total uh, votes that were ultimately announced. In other words, that INEC in many cases handed the real results in polling units, but went ahead and rigged the election uh, for the ruling party. So I think, um, as I said in the last podcast, that OB's um, um, lawyers, and to some extent, uh, uh, Atiku's lawyers, the lawyers for the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku, have so far presented devastating evidence of massive fraud and corruption by INEC and ultimately by the APC and the president-elect, we must assume. Um, and so, and the, during cross-examination by uh, the defense attorney is representing the respondents, whether it's INEC or the APC or Tinubu. Remarkably, there was very little dent met, made in the cases presented either by uh, experts in cybersecurity or results that reflected um, the outcome of um, polling unit col- uh, um, uh, outcomes that were ultimately um, uh, given to political party representatives but did not reflect what was announced in Abuja. So um, so that's my opening take on the EU um, uh, final report and on INEX response. I think that the EU report is compelling. I think that it coincides with the sense of any Nigerian who monitored that election, that, you know, things, there were huge gaps uh, in performance. And, um, of course, INEC, uh, in their response, seem to insist that we're going to have our heads in the sand and we're just going to play it down. I don't know what your take is. Yeah. Um, there's that famous thing, which, you know, some people don't like, um, you know, for those who don't know, uh, I, I actually engage in um, more difficult <laughs> thought and conversation. So um, my background, it, it, part of my background is history and philosophy. So, uh, but this thought is, I'm just saying this stuff. This thought is, uh, if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in a book. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's not every black person, obviously. Yes. Um, but there is validity, validity to it. Um, just like when you wonder why the vast majority of black countries have problems. It's not inherent. It's not inherent. Doesn't mean because you're black that you're going to go one way or the other. No, it's not that. It's a lot of social cultural part of it is um, the way colonization worked out for some people and the people who ended up actually implementing colonization. But that's a whole different conversation. The EU just sat down and said, um in the way nigerians would love because Mm -hmm. it means nothing 
to the mm-hmm. Nigerians by and large, from top to bottom. If you doubt me, you open and Google and listen to the analysis on um, the majority of, of these things, um, of Nigerian news sources, the EU and even the American mission observers where you had um, American politicians like Stacey Abrahams and co. Categorically, as emphatically, outside of Donald Trump, said, <laughs> outside of Trump-like people, well, you know, let me not say Trump-like people, but you get people get the gist. <laughs> there was no elections. It doesn't exist. It didn't mm-hmm. exist. Um, you can go and compare it with their previous reports. This was worse than um, Yaradua's election mm-hmm. back in 2006, I believe, or seven, right? Six, I believe, or seven. This was worse than that one. They categorically said that there's no elections. Um uh, as politely as these guys can put it. So, you know, most people would, um, like I said, it's, it's the perfect way of putting it to a Nigerian crowd on the Nigerian media and people that cover it because it means absolutely nothing. Uh, it's business as usual. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I watch a whole bunch of people who I need to call their names, content creators or all that. They have Instagram lives, they have YouTube lives, all that. And even when you bring it up, when they bring on guests on their YouTube lives or Instagram lives, and you the guests try to make sense, not do it the Nigerian. The Nigerian way is typically violence. That's what that's what it is. Violence spelled with the A V A W. It's a different way. Violence. <laughs> violence. So that, that's a different Nigerian way entirely. You can Google that or tweet that and. and but even when you go to these guys that you explain it and they know they can't get out of the corner, they either get angry or they tell you, well, all elections in Nigeria are like that. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, to some degree, it is right. <laughs> all elections globally have some level of uh, this thing. Controversy. But yes, it's mm-hmm. not it's not a lie. But the question mm-hmm. is, to what extent um, people talk about the 64 elections in Nigeria being something like this. I say based on everything I've studied and everything I've read, this is this things uh, the year I do I own, the, the this thing is just to a whole different level. Mm-hmm. It's just at this point in but, time. But but let me just interrupt you. Huh? Let's even assume that the 1964 election uh, elections were this way, right? Isn't it a shame that? Um, 50 years later, almost 50 years later, Nigerians will be saying the elections we did 50 years after the flawed elections of the 1960s um, were just like the 1960s. So, you know, um, it's it's sort of the, the argument that some of our people make when you point to the absence of public investment by governments, meaningful investment in infrastructure, right? And some Nigerians will say, oh, you can't uh, be too much in a hurry. Rome was not built in a day. You know, so they throw out these silly, really ignorant uh, sayings without knowing what it says about them, right? So I said to them, if the metaphoric Rome was not built in a day, that it took maybe decades and centuries, maybe even more than a century to build Rome, the template is already there, right? So if you are insisting on spending as many years as it took to build the original Rome, then you are mentally, um, there's something mentally wrong with you. Yeah, so, I, I, so I we get, should I not, that thing yeah, but, but we I should get not that be posting said. that our elections of 2023 uh, were just as bad as those of the, you know, one held in the 1960s, you know, if, <laughs> If that's where we are, then we've actually is it's called yeah. exponential so, regression. Yeah. So somebody making that defense that it's always been like that mm-hmm. is is just and you know they're they're unabashed about it. They don't care. Um, like some of these people have um, even maybe by birth they have passports from other countries, so they get mm-hmm. to travel. Even though they live in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Some of them travel, they go to other places, yes. Um, they they see, the point of saying they travel is not to just say that, oh, you know, they see that this is not all there is. 
that's the point. Yeah, actually, you actually go to other places. And I remember when a relative came to visit, and um, you know, it, there's a difference when you when you you know go to another country and you've lived mm-hmm. in Nigeria, you live mm-hmm. in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody has their own cup of tea. Some people go to Nigeria for different reasons, but there's a difference when you're now used to living in Nigeria. You go to another country, and they came in and we had ordered uh, wine, um, which I always. Uh, Actually, I need to even check my anyway. Anyway, my latest case that is supposed to come in, and the wine came in. Uh, where I, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a, a wine. Well, not a little bit. I'm, I'm I'm very deep into wine and all that. So the wine came in, and the cases were just at at the front door. And you know, I was busy. I didn't have time to go stock the wine properly. And person is in a panic, like ah. Huh? Like, uh, you know, so there's that, um, uh, you see something else. It's mm. a different, uh, and, and even when these people on, on Nigerian media, I mean, some of them talk very well. Th- thank God for, thank God for somebody like Dele Faro to me and people like that, mm-hmm. right? They go in and talk very well, but the majority of these people go back and uh, dig deeper trenches. They want, they defend the system. You know, some people would term it, um, uh, Stockholm syndrome or, mm-hmm. you know, some, somewhere in that, in that distance. So if you go in and you take a look at, um, all these things you see people defending it people who are not talking about it but it's just it it is sadly part of the fabric is part mm-hmm. of the nobody's talking about it these guys actually went to INEC shook them presented the distance from all accounts and everything I was taking a look at because there are a whole bunch of phenomenal I don't know if they are data scientists or data enthusiasts or data probably data scientists of some mm-hmm. levels a lot of them because they have at least some data to work with so a lot of them are monitoring these things, but some of them physically, a lot of them actually overseas, uh, America, UK, so so many other countries. And as of today, INEC is beginning to change some of the results on the portals. Hmm. So the big one was Abuja, right? So everybody talked about 25, you needed 25% in Abuja, mm-hmm. the federal capital territory to, to win. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not talking about the legal aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I was just talking about the public debate the, 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 based on yeah. the law. Mm-hmm. So apparently, since they presented that result, um, the, the sorry, the report announced, right? yeah, mm-hmm. they went to present the report. INEC has been slowly altering, especially with the court cases, which we'll talk about as well. They've been mm-hmm. slowly altering, which you can go to the portal and take a look at it for, for yourself. Uh, Tinubu's result. So it has been coming up. I think it came up from. 18 percent and now it's about 23 percent hmm. so 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 all the while by the way mm-hmm. um based on what what is in court mm-hmm. they uh threw away most of the results especially in the fct so they they are claiming that they don't even have the majority of the results in the fct mm-hmm. but they declared the winner and not just the fct mm-hmm. the law of states they're blank uh, these things, which we'll get into as well, but yes, but that's the yes. reality of the of the reports. Like mm-hmm. it is, it is the most um, Nigerian thing. Stacey Abrams, mm-hmm. all these people come mm-hmm. out. You know, mm-hmm. there's only so much they are going to talk about in front of. Uh, uh, they've, they've they've given their reports. It's yeah. literally yeah. saying, look, there is no elections. Mm-hmm. Um, there was not. There was nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think the the good side to it. I wanted to add just the good side to it is. Um, Anyway, I'll get to that. There was a Sierra Leonean thing I was going to talk about, but mm-hmm. anyway, you, you can, uh, you can, um, uh, but yeah, but but that's the main this thing about it. That's just mm-hmm. what the report entails. Yes. The the so th- th- this is this is a segment from the EU uh, report. Um, it, it says the widely welcomed Electoral Act 2022 uh, introduced measures aimed at building stakeholder trust. However, the Act's first test. The general election revealed crucial gaps in terms of INEX accountability and transparency proved to be insufficiently elaborated and lacked clear provisions for timely and efficient uh, implementation. Weak points include a lack of INEC independent structures and capabilities to enforce sanctions 
for electoral offenses and breaches of campaign finance rules, and so on and so on. Then he says, furthermore, the presidential election of INEC leadership, the, the presidential selection of INEC leadership at the federal and state level leaves the electoral institution vulnerable to the per uh, perception of partiality. And once, I mean, so the, the thing is, <laughs> There are, there are, so the, yeah, so the take, the take of some Nigerians, and as I said, these are, these are Oibo people straining to be polite, you know, because of course they don't want to say you Africans are baboons, you are monkeys, the way you, you did this thing, you are idiots, right? Which, trust me, in their private spaces, this is what, there must be, we're laughing stock, is what we are. Right, so we waste uh, every four years. We waste billions, okay, trying to do an election, and ultimately, what we do is uh, is a sham exercise, right? Um, and 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 so, these people are trying to be very very polite in their language, but it's it comes true still that. This was not an election. This was not an election. And this was a, a, an election where the top leadership of INEC made all kinds of promises within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria that they were going to go by the rules, uh, the system was impregnable to manipulation, and so on and so forth. And we got a fairly good system. It's just that we have a system that is not uh, proof against shamelessness, against just um, daylight robbery, which is what happened in case after case after case. And so, so you look at the problem that the European Union highlighted, that in a lot of polling boats, party agents did not have access to the results, right? And then the results were not uploaded in the way that the Electoral Act stipulates that they should be. And then a lot of the uh, parties then approached the electoral uh, tribunals, right, uh, for review of the results. And INEC is subpoenaed to produce documents. These are documents on the basis of which INEC announced the, so the ostensible results. And so INEC will come to court and make excuses. Oh, we brought two out of 10 documents we are supposed to bring. Okay. The next day they'll say, oh, yeah, you know, this party did not pay for the printing of the thing. So we didn't bring it. Okay. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. So you see at every stage fraud, that fraud is writ large because if you are confident in the elections that you are, yeah, that you announced. Then you should have the documents. If anybody challenges you, you say, here, here are the documents, right? Um, and the documents should match what was, uh, what obtained at polling units all over the country on election day, you know, but obviously, uh, that is not the case. Well, you highlighted the, um, the issue of Nigerians. So for some Nigerians, you know, there is a zero-sum game, right? And it's also, um, as I say, politics has few principles other than the principle of victory, to have the V or the W, the win. And so some people are just um, celebrating the fact that the candidate who is their, their um, ethnic champion or their uh, political, um, you know, who belongs to the a party of their political leaning, won, or somebody who uh, is of their religious persuasion, won. What these people don't understand, or maybe they understand, I don't know, because this should be a lesson that should be clear to us, every Nigerian by now, is that if you support electoral impunity, if you support fraud, if you support the um, uh, 
they they um, they steal enough elections. Essentially, what you're saying is that you have no investment in democracy, and uh, at some point you are going to be on the losing side. So if that is the way the game is played, at some point your candidate is going to win and your candidate will be rigged out. And trust me, I don't think there's anybody whose candidate is rigged out of a deserved victory who says, oh yeah, I applaud the person who stole my candidate's um, uh, mandate, right? Because that's the way elections are supposed to be to be made. So that's one point. But the other point is that once we institute the ethos that elections can be stolen, then everything is up for grabs. Uh, young people will go into exams, not preparing for, for the exams. They will give bribes. Uh, they will get good grades based on the amount of money they have to bribe. Um, they're going to go to university. They're going to study medicine. They're going to bribe to become doctors. And they are, they're going to treat you. And even those of us who are outside of the country, they are going to treat your loved ones. So you're going to hear that somebody died uh, needlessly because they were treated by somebody who has embraced the idea that money should buy anything or that connection should buy anything, you see. And at any rate, when you have bad governance, it affects everybody. I don't think that there is an APC person who goes to the market and, you know, there's a certain price for, the, for fuel and you produce your APC card or you produce a cash and you're a Muslim or you're a Yoruba person and they say, oh, you know what? We're going to knock off 200 Naira from the price of fuel. No, every Nigerian ultimately suffers. But let's even assume that a person who is illicitly put in power, becomes a genius of leadership, Okay, begins to act in the public interest, which is an argument that some people are using. Oh, now, so far, Tinubu is doing well. The thing is that if Tinubu is doing well so far, let's even assume that. Let's, let's grant that for the sake of argument. You can't hold him to doing well. Uh, throughout his term in office, right? He could be doing well now because the case is in court. He doesn't know what will happen. He wants to sort of uh, arouse a certain kind of public response and sentiment. Once he's then pronounced to be the legitimate president, then his true colors as a president um, uh, emerges, right? But even if he continues to do well for four years, the point is still that the body politic, the moral fiber of the, of, of, the, of, of the country is already poisoned. When you tell young people, when you tell every Nigerian that you can steal uh, the most sacred and important political office in the country, if you can steal that, then you can steal anything. You know? So even if Tinubu goes ahead and becomes Nigeria's Abraham Lincoln, Okay, um, he he will still remain a net um, uh, um, adverse um, factor in Nigerian politics. He doesn't do much that is positive for Nigeria ultimately. Yeah. Anyway, um, I mean, at the end of the day, he, I, you could be you could be that in so many ways, right? The main thing is to take a look at what is supposed to happen and what was supposed to happen. Um, and that's the way a certain level of um, the word, a certain level of standards mm -hmm. in life is, is always needed. Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, that's, the, that's the natural evolution of humanity. And you would expect that the majority of humanity in this 2023 has evolved to have a certain level of standards. Um, it's not a question of making boastful. Um, you know, every group makes all kinds of claims about their lineage, most of which is nonsense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Nigeria is no different from 
European ethnic groups that will make all kinds of claims. Um, you can make all kinds of boastful claims that maybe you went to school, your group people went to whatever. This is all hocus pocus generally. But at the core, what you need is standards in life. So, and that's the main <laughs> thing. You need you you, you went to, you, you want standards of some sort. What kind of country do you, do you have? A country? Did you have? A, do you when you what? How do you select your leaders? All those kind of things. So, anyway, that's just the moral of the distance. Yeah. If you if you if you don't um, believe in standards and you believe mm-hmm. in the wild wild west, mm-hmm. then um, you know let's have the wild wild west. You know everybody mm-hmm. should should just yeah. get gone and let's chase ourselves around and see who wins, right? So <laughs> yeah. uh, and, I'm all and, for it. Yeah. <laughs> all, and I'm and talking it. about standards, right? Um, to talk about standards, um, which is um, perhaps another way of talking about best practices, right? So elections were held in Kenya last year. Um, there were petitions for judicial review of the result of those elections. Those reviews, judicial reviews, were carried out uh, in a very transparent, in a very public, indeed in a televised format. Okay, same thing happened in Ghana, and so I was speaking to. Um, a political, uh, you know, a major Nigerian politician uh, a few days ago, and we were discussing this same question. And the question, the, the issue then became, why is it that in the case of Nigeria, in an election where so much was at stake, where the very... um you know, Nigerians under under Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari, had come to a place of despair, both about democracy itself, uh, but also about the direction, policy directions of the of the, of the country, um, with attacks that escalated, sectarian attacks, um, with. Uh, corruption on an unprecedented uh, scale by in an administration that had staked out his claim to being um, <laughs> to 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 having uh, excellent credentials uh, in fighting corruption um, uh, with just the exacerbation of violence on every scale, you know by um, the Islamic um, uh, ISIS in West Africa by Boko Haram and so on and so forth by Hertzman. So Buhari had brought na- the Nigerian polity to to a pass where for a lot of people um, the 2023 elections had to do with the very question of uh, whether Nigeria will continue to have a future as one corporate unit. That's what, in a sense, was at stake. So it was an election in which everybody needed to bring their best practices, beginning with INEC, beginning with the security agencies, with the political parties and candidates, and the way that they conducted themselves. In all of this, the elections then fail on a massive scale, you know, especially the presidential elections failed on a massive scale. Um, so there's a lot of there is a lot of issues that are being canvassed before the uh, election petition at uh, the election tribunals, right? And especially in the presidential uh, elections. So I think that it's a betrayal of Nigerians. <laughs> and the betrayal of the principles of civil liberty, of political, democratic transparency and accountability, that our judges, the judges here in these petitions, chose to hear them, not uh, in the most open of 
forums, not televised, but to hear them in a sense secretly. Of course, Nigerians get uh, <coughs> snip, snippets from different media organizations about what transpired every day in the tribunals. But it would have given great Philip great uh, hope to Nigerians if they were able to see the entire process. So that at the end of the day, whatever verdict the tribunal came to, um, in a sense that the public will have the confidence that that verdict reflected uh, what transpired during the hearings, right? And it has nothing to do with whether one candidate or another candidate uh, triumphs, whether Peter Obi's petition succeeds and you know they announce him as the uh, uh, proper uh, president elect or Tinubu is ultimately affirmed as a as a president or a tiku uh, or there is a call for uh, supplementary elections or a call for the cancellation of elections whatever the the verdict the ultimate verdict is if nigerians feel that something has happened outside of their purview that the process has been hidden from them then already uh, again, we have failed in uh, what was a great opportunity to... Uh, and so it's interesting, by the way, that INEC and the APC and Tinubu, the ostensible winners uh, and organizers of this election that they want to tell us was uh, in compliance with the Electoral Commission, that they all teamed up to insist that they did not want a televised election. So you say, what are they hiding? Because if I were the INEC leader and I was sure that I called the correct election, I would ask for mm. CNN or the BBC to come and beam the hearings so that they can see us acquit ourselves um, um, uh, and, and, and earn our image back from those who are traducing our image. But so these are the ones who say, yeah, we acted correctly, uh, but we don't want the public to see us um, struggle or to see us triumph in, um, in, in, in upholding that self-image. So. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, now we're talking about the, uh, we moved on to the, the, the outcome. So the tribunals, yeah. Yeah. About the tribunals and all that. Um, first thing I would say is uh, the one good one uh, uh, the positive thing of, of one of the positive things of this week was the Sierra Leone elections happened mm -hmm. and um, I always uh, I don't know whether to laugh or you know send out letters and emails warning the countries when I see Nigerian mm -hmm. officials going to monitor the elections <laughs> I'm like look man you need to get these guys out of your country oh man. my gosh so I, I saw joke. Jonathan I was like yeah, yeah. What, what are you going where are you going yeah, to man yeah, in, yeah. You're, you're going to what monitor are your credentials what? for monitoring like, anything are you monitoring man so <laughs> you know I, I saw them go there they, they you know did their charades and all that and um, <laughs> the the Sierra Leoneans who very cerebral people. Uh, a lot of my good friends as Sierra Leoneans, uh, my high school, um, secondary school teacher, mm -hmm. we just lost uh, Sierra Leonean. Great people, man. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot calmer, a lot more reflective, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, there was a video I don't want to... There was a, a traveler who sent out a video, differences between Nigeria and Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a great one on, on this thing. Anyway, so... People were not happy with the elections. Um, obviously, and people are typically not always happy with elections. Question is, is to what degree? Mm -hmm. And in some cases, like in the case of Nigeria, was there even any election really? So there, there's nothing to be. There was an event, but it wasn't an election in the case mm -hmm. of Nigeria. But that, so you know, they showed certain things. The people showed even the organization was way better. The basic stuff, just printing papers, pictures. Uh, there's there are things here and there. I have a couple of, of people I've worked with and friends who are Sierra Leoneans who actually live here and went there to vote or went there to be part of the movement, right? So I followed them on, mm -hmm. on social media because they are, they are friends to some degree, right? So 
Um, you know, people had complaints here and there. Nothing and nothing, nothing compared to Nigeria. And the electoral commissioner came out and said, Hey, if you guys are not happy, look at what happened in Nigeria. Look at Peter B. <laughs> yeah. Specifically. That was a bright spot. He said, mm-hmm. look at Peter B. And I'd said this all through when people were people keep they keep on insulting the OB distance. I said, look. You can't control your you can't control your support. You can barely even in some mm-hmm. people can barely even control their own families, much less mm-hmm. supporters, right? So you can't control what people do. Um, your biggest control maybe is your family. Um, maybe it's people around you to some degree. You can't control that. But to use that in the Nigerian fashion, the violence, viol- violence fashion, as a spell, violence, spell, <laughs> violence <laughs> fashion, and say it was Peter or be mm-hmm. I'm like, you're just being very mm-hmm. um um, unfair is the, is the kindest thing I'll say to that person mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. obviously a lot of them were beyond unfair. Um, but um, you see other countries looking by as like, they're not even saying, hey, go to court like Kenya. No, they're like, hey, look, see what happened in Nigeria? See, Peter mm-hmm. Obi could have ignited mm-hmm. his supporters and mm-hmm. God knows where we would be today if he had yeah. done that. Yeah. But he chose the part which he has from the day one campaigned on, you know, um, he cares about where Nigeria goes to. Mm-hmm. He believes in Nigeria, has one passport, you know, all that stuff. Um, he's traveled around the world, all that good stuff. Um, and then go to court, follow the distance. And that was a bright spot about it. That was a good spot to see mm-hmm. like, okay, hey, look, even other countries that are taking a whole, take, consuming all these um, inf- things from Nigeria, um, are sitting down, mind you, Sri Lanka has a massive, um, um, both religious divide, cultural yeah. divide, yeah, yeah. um, class you have divide, class divide. You have mm-hmm. all these divides of yeah. different kinds. You have, uh, just like you have in uh, um, um, Liberia, same thing with Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. I've forgotten what they're called in Sri Lanka, the transplants. We don't really mm-hmm. call them as much in Nigeria, mm-hmm. um. Because the largest, the transplants, I mean, by the way, are not trans, modern day transplants. Yeah, they're. Sierra Sur- Luna is a country that was created by the British uh, to deal with the aftermath, essentially dealing with the aftermath first of the Revolutionary War. Mm-hmm. And then um, eventually their own um, um, abolition of slave Slavery. trading before slavery, but slave trading. Mm -hmm. So it's a country that was created. Same thing with Liberia was also created to deal with the aftermath of both the American Mm -hmm. Revolutionary War and the American Civil War. Mm -hmm. So in in Liberia, you have a a group, which to some degree, you call them an ethnic congregation. They are called the Americas. Americas. Uh, Mm -hmm. Sierra Leone, I've forgotten what they're called, but they are, you know, they they have all these divides. That's the point. You have even those kind of profound divides. Um, Muslims, you've had Muslims rule, you've had Christians rule, Tijan Kaba, I remember mm-hmm. growing up, all this mm-hmm. kind of people, right? So, um, and they're like, look, go to court and, mm-hmm. you know, look at what happened with Peter Obi. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's somebody, people sitting down from the outside are using that. They're not even talking about Kenya. And mm-hmm. they're, they're like, look, mm-hmm. even in even in a, <laughs> yeah. be nice to Nigeria, even mm-hmm. in a terrible place like Nigeria and I'm being nice. Mm-hmm. Like, look at how Peter will be conducted himself. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're saying, right? Yeah. So that's the good part. And you, when you, But when you get to the tribunals and you look at the, what's going on, the cases, and I don't know how it ends up. I've got, yeah. I've got no I mean, idea, I'm, but... you know, so, I mean, my point is that even if, let's say, Peter will be wins in court, and the court, uh, in the best case scenario, declares that he won the elections, or the court decide, okay, he didn't quite win. He came the closest to winning because I I believe um, from everything that will be had the most votes, um, uh, most likely, so that it was absurd to place him at third. But but let's say that he had the most votes, but he did not meet the threshold somehow uh, for victory, right? So the tribunal could say, okay, you go for another election. I actually think that if there is another election that will be, is likely not to do well, you know, principally because the pool of his supporters, ethnicity and, and 
uh, sectarian sentiments have poisoned that pool. You know, so some people now feel that there is a war between Igbo people and Yoruba people. There is a war between uh, Muslims and Christians and so on, uh, Catholics and Pentecostals, you know, which is a sort of divisions or divisiveness that Nigeria um, is a genius at trumping and uh, trumpeting, trumping up. Um, but what I'm saying is that even if we'll be wins, right? Uh, there are Tinubu supporters who now feel, yeah, B must have, you know, somebody must hate uh, Tinubu because he's a Muslim or he's a Yoruba man and they went and they want to push him out, right? But if the hearings were out in the open, because the tribunals, hopefully, if they want to, if they are sworn to the defense of the law, then they should have no fears, okay? People will see the evidence. And the truth is that uh, we have to give ordinary people more, more credit than they usually get. Even though people are not lawyers, when they look at proceedings in a courtroom over several days, over several weeks, they can have, get, have a sense of which party is making a compelling case and which is making a weak case, right? Um, it struck me that uh, many of the witnesses that have testified for either the PDP or the Labour Party, that the defendants have had, have had to resort to very sort of tangential technical questions, you know. So there was this hyper cyber security guy who testified for the Labour Party and and uh, the uh, Tinubu's lawyer was asking, oh, you know, who is uh, the boss of your agencies? Did your boss give you permission to come? And so on and so forth. So, I mean, you already see this is a lawyer who is struggling, you know, uh, because you cannot impugn the, the, the evidence that this person has presented. And so you resort to technicalities. Your boss write you a letter. Did you did he approve your your presence here through a secular or by you know verbal means and so on? So that's that's one the loss already that whoever emerges victorious. Uh, and let us say that somehow, let's say that Tinubu is affirmed, which a lot of people think that. That's the way these cases go uh, in Nigeria. That whatever happens, even when there is abundant merit to the petitions, that the Nigerian judiciary has never had the spine. And I really hope that at some point they develop that spine, they grow the spine, right? To remove an illegitimate government at the federal level. They've done that at the state level. And I think that will be was either the first case or one of the first cases where when they removed Ngige, right, in Anambra State. Um, it was the first case. Yeah. So, and before then, it was almost like once you rigged yourself in, it became a fait accompli, first of all, because you had all these uh, resources of the state at your disposal, and so you can buy the best lawyers, and if you came to bribing, you could offer the most handsome bribes, right, to... Uh, panels of judges and so on. Now, we have never had a federal election, they, 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 uh, a, pres a presidential election in invalidated by the courts. But this one was so egregious, so blatant, so flagrant that, um, and there have been very bad ones in the past, but this one particularly, I think, crossed a line so that if the panel were to ignore all of that and just say, we're going to affirm Tinubu as president, I think that uh, you are going to see one of two things. You see that, that future elections will be more violent because everybody knows that whatever we do, uh, once we get in there, basically will cost uh, to four year to four years, right? So it will either be more violent, 
uh, instigated by the candidates to intimidate their opponents and win, or there will be instant recourse to violence by losing candidates would instigate violence because they know if we go to court, there's not going to be a recourse, right? And part of what happens in Nigeria is sort of there's this Igbo proverb na, which says, Alo, Bara, Bulo, Menani. So in other words, if you do something that is deeply evil, but it's let to simmer for a year, it becomes part of the custom, part of the tradition of a people. People get accustomed to this is the way we do business, right? So, so what we're going to see, right? Um, I, I will suggest what we're going to see is that if Tinubu is affirmed um, as, as a president, which is yeah, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, it will be disruptive if you remove somebody who has removed uh, service chiefs, appointed new service chiefs, renamed airports and so on and so forth, um, you know, remove fuel subsidies. So are all those actions going to be reversed if you bring in another president? But so there, there is a solution. And that solution, I think, is to have the elections in Nigeria much earlier so that we resolve the question of um, any, any questions about electoral uh, disputes must be resolved before a new president is uh, installed. And in the case that a um, courts do not reach that resolution, that there should be a, some kind of caretaker committee that should take office. Maybe holdovers from the previous uh, parliament, whether the Senate president, the Speaker of the House, could jointly hold uh, the presidency as president and vice president until all the cases are disposed of. It doesn't make sense that somebody who is accused of winning an office illegitimately is installed there as president. And then, you know, cases are ongoing in court. Because as president, he can, you know, he can give instructions. If INEC is asked to show up in court, he can give instructions, don't show up. You know, um, I'm going to sign a paper for you that you are sick. You've been flown abroad for a major um, somebody who is, is supposed to be a witness and so on. So there are all kinds of damage that somebody is capable of making once uh, you install install them as president. Yeah, so with the tribunals, right, um, mm -hmm. it's um, just simply a case of, um, you're talking of, you're, you're, you're talking of having confidence in the process. People should, they should be televised. I mean that would be great. The trouble, the trouble with that um, uh, thought process in itself is, you have a lot of court cases, tribunals, which this tribunal has a direct appeal, I believe, to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of court cases and tribunals um, like this, similar to this worldwide, which are not televised, which is fine. The the differences in these countries, like in America, for instance, is not televised still till tomorrow. It's uh, sketched, is recorded. Um, the transcripts are released and, um, judgments typically, are, mm -hmm. um, um, the legal doctrines, are, are put forth for people to read if they, if they want the, the difference is historically people have built up these institutions mm -hmm. in Nigeria. It's a different case. It's not that it's not being built up. There is no confidence in the judiciary whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know this conversation of people will do tomorrow. Nigeria is already and has been for a while a cash and carry mm -hmm. um, political country, which is why Tinubu ran for office, right? So, if not in a country that has any modicum of um, this thing, Tinubu would not any it'll, kind. It won't be a candidate. Period. It wouldn't. It wouldn't run for anything, but. Like people, people will talk about people in the past. I'm like, you know, it's it's amazing that um, Ibos, for instance, voted for Basinger eight years, 
And you have, maybe you have some Yoruba gatekeepers who think that uh, Obasanjo is not a Yoruba person. I don't know. Um, Ibos have supported all kinds of people. Even uh, Awolowo did well mm -hmm. in the East in 80, 83 elections, mm -hmm. right? Um, even with Zeke on the ballot, he did decently. Yeah. He didn't win mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. East, but he did well. Mm -hmm. Go check the results. I mean, when, I, yeah. when Ojuku was on the ballot, he lost. <laughs> you know? Ojuku himself yeah. lost on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so if you, you have all, the, you've come to, you, you, you've been at a point. It's mm -hmm. absolutely at a point where it's cash and carry. The elections were bought outright with money. And that's, uh, the amount varies based on why. And anybody that's arguing, you go and see the, um, you go and see the um, uh, primaries. You go and see how much was paid. Mm -hmm. You hear how much was paid even for the House of Reps elections, Senate elections. According to uh, this thing, what Akbabi paid uh, each senator like $350,000 or somewhere, like, according to some reports. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the exact figure is. I'm not endorsing any figure. I'm just, it's just reality that it was outright, they were outright payments. Yes. And it's, it's a different comparative in politics where there is a level of corruption where maybe in America, oh, there's a give and take of some sort. You get in there and are sponsored by certain people. It's it's not this. It is not um, like the conversations we have in America in terms of, oh, um, we are sponsored by this or there's the uh, appearance of, 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 of corruption, which, you know, there's, there, there are give and takes everywhere. The difference what you just carry, like in the case of Jefferson, when um, uh, Congressman Jefferson at the time, when Atiku gave yeah. him mm -hmm. uh, money, uh, the, America, the American media of... said he, they, they found cold hard cash, literally found <laughs> in, in cold his, hard his cash in his fridge. Yeah. In his fridge, mm -hmm. this is what this is what happens in Nigeria. You buy everybody out. Some figures said um, um, INEC chairman, that's the Electoral Commission chairman, was given like one hundred and eighty million dollars. So. At well, the end of the day, well, at the end of the we, day, we, we don't know that for a fact, but you know that some figures so, again. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, it's I, I do. To... I will sit down and one hundred percent say, obviously, a large amount of money, that kind of money, mm -hmm. definitely well, exchange hands well, for sure. Well, I don't know the exact figure. I was not part of it. I'm yeah, not privy no, to what, it. What but... I'm willing to say is that there's a lot of corruption in our country. We don't know that this guy got money. You know. Um, it's based it's, on based on based on based on the, the way a lot he, of the way he conducted the election, not the just the elections. The, the election. There were recordings. There the, were the recordings way. which were authenticated that um, there were conversations on how much he should get. Hmm. Uh, but it's not even you already yeah. know. Yeah, that that's you know, what I mean, people people you know make out like bandits in in these situations. You know, um, the way that uh, Yakubu um you know conducted the elections is is you have to be you have to have zero respect for your name for your legacy to put your name behind this kind of election and to announce it uh the way he did right but having said so um you know if if again we we inhabit a world where people demand proof. So all I'm saying is that if somebody says to us, okay, show proof, right? We have no proof. But all we can say is that it doesn't pass the smell test. You have to you have to hate your name and yourself so much to to call the in kind a, of election that he did. So Yeah, in a decent well, country, if somebody yeah. says show proof, based yeah. on what people have brought out, based on the recordings, based on the mm -hmm. information, based mm -hmm. on everything. Mm -hmm. In any half working country, there would have been a serious investigation. Oh, in any half working and, country, yeah. And I'm not even talking of America, yeah. I'm talking of yeah. countries yeah. that you might not even, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, small countries here and mm -hmm. there. So there's, there was enough for a full scale investigation. Investigation, yeah. What yeah. people, when people, the mischievous people that will say show proof mm -hmm. are trying to say, well, show a conviction. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, yeah. There will yeah. not be an investigation. There won't be and an there investigation. will not be a conviction. Yeah. Neither of neither of those two things will happen. Yeah. But there's it's, enough. It's, it's like enough. it's like um all of us were there when the PDP and the APC conducted their primaries. We know that it was a cash and carry scandalous cash and carry boon for 
party delegates that people were giving $15,000 or more to cast one vote. And that's some issue that ultimately we have to resolve in, in our electoral system. Because no, no man spends $15,000. No man even will spend $1,000 per delegate to win an election, to win a nomination in order to become president and work for the country. Any man who is digging, putting a hand in his pocket, even for money that he has stolen uh, from the Nigerian people, but he's bringing out that money to bribe people, to give him the nomination, that man is going there ultimately to steal some more. Okay? And, and we, until we clean up the system, we're going to be governed, ruled is more like it, we're going to be ruled by certified criminals, you know, uh, which is why, I mean, we didn't even, haven't talked about the um, proposal to increase the salaries of serving, uh, top serving uh, political officials in Nigeria. That's, that's another um, I mean, it, it, it riles you. It actually makes you angry. It's like at every turn, Nigerians have been, Nigerians have been taken for fools, you know. Uh, those, anyway, let me, let me not get there. Let me not get there because um, I, I will want us to spend a few minutes um, uh, sort of talking about uh, Mr. Tinubu's uh, outing at the um, Global Financing Pact Summit in Paris. So, they, um, the presidency orchestrated this, Tinubu's participation in this, as um, his first official uh, duty outside of Nigeria. Okay. Um, that there were reports by Sahar reporters and a few other media organizations that this was actually an opportunity for Tinubu to to see his foreign doctors. You know, again, um, we're not sure of that. That's been reported there. I don't think I've seen uh, denial by the government. But uh, if this is true then we better be used to this as a holding pattern that Tinubu is going to spend a few weeks in Nigeria and a few weeks outside of Nigeria seeking medical help. You and I, in the long run up to the 2023 elections, had constantly said that the business of running a country like Nigeria, which is in a congenital condition of, of failure, should not fall to somebody who is hampered by severe medical crisis himself. But all of that is now a moot point. But to speak substantively of Tinubu's participation in this summit, uh, at the main section of the summit, Tinubu was a no-show. And I think he sent the Nigerian ambassador to France to represent him. Um, he showed up for a photo op, and even then there were so many miscues. Um, he did not speak um, um, to, he didn't say anything to speak of. And so this is the first, so his first um, foreign mission, if you like, must be called what it was. Uh, a massive failure and embarrassment for Nigeria. Um, it continues the pattern of Buhari, who went to international um, fora, whether the United Nations or elsewhere, and was um, a kind of um, forgettable figure, you know, perhaps because nobody respected him. Um, because of his absence of eloquence. Um, and um, so it's a shame of a nation. It's really a shame of a country like Nigeria with all the intellectual 
uh, talent that the country has, that we are um, again and again led by people who are not taken seriously on the international stage, who look like rejects uh, in the gathering of fellow presidents and uh, heads of government. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, with that, if you watch, um, yeah, just like well, you said, if you watch, um, he went to Tinubu went to Paris, um, most likely to all kinds of reports, right? To go to uh, see his doctors in London, which he went to London afterwards. And by some people, he was, um, um, he was, it was partially orchestrated by the Chagori businessmen. Neither here nor there, you could go read all those reports. That's not even the distant. I implore people to read all those things and listen to any of the evidences or anything like that. Um, make up your own minds. He goes there, and a lot of the Nigerian media see it as a successful um, outing. outing. Yeah. Uh, people defended the fact that um, he didn't speak on any panels, that you don't need to speak on panels. You know, people. I believe Arise News is one of the biggest TV stations in Nigeria. They defended all that. Uh, people like Ruben Abatsi specifically uh, defended that. And a host of other people out there. Mm. Go Google it yourself. Check it out. Mm. Most of the Nigeria media uh, defended it. Why should he talk on the panel? Had they didn't have this person or, or other heads? Of, in fact, mm. they told us that the other heads of states didn't talk in the panels. But <laughs> the evidence came out that um, they did, obviously. And they spoke very well. Mm -hmm. Ruto, who was elected recently from Kenya, spoke very well. Um, uh, South African president spoke very well as well a uh, whole bunch of people but you know you didn't elect a guy that speaks very well you mm -hmm. didn't come to the campaign and speak very well so you don't expect you don't that was not what you elected right so that's neither here nor there mm -hmm. so you have a whole bunch of these guys who are talking about it as a great um in the nigerian media and um they were more fixated with um other things like okonji wala didn't post a picture with tinubu mm -hmm. um and that 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 one particularly on the <laughs> on the other side really um, annoyed me because people started insinuating that Okonjiwala got her position with the support of the Nigerian government, with the support mm. of the APC government, which is not how you get the WTO position. Mm -hmm. If the Nigerian government was supporting you to get the AP uh, WTO position, you would have more Nigerians in the WTO. <laughs> you would have had more Nigerians contesting for the WTO. The reality is America, uh, just basic, I don't even need to get into how the world works in terms of trade. Mm -hmm. But America, the WTO is America's baby. Mm -hmm. It is America's baby. You're not getting there without America's approval. Oh, they don't sorry. typically put Americans there, but they typically put American aligned people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and and there was a lady that distant had to just tweet at her, like, please, uh, don't say all these things, right? Don't say, Akonji Wala became a U.S. citizen in 2019. If she wasn't a U.S. citizen, she would not be WTO. Mm -hmm. She's operating a different level. All her, she wouldn't be W. If she was solely a Nigerian citizen, she would not be WTO. Dr. It, there's no chance, mm -hmm. no way in hell. You need a certain kind of alignment. Um, mm -hmm. The other lady too, that the South Korean lady that was a, a finalist with her as well, mm -hmm. also had a deep American background and it's also a naturalized American as well. You go back to a lot of these people, they have a deep American alliance. America is not letting you run global trade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> America is not letting you run, be one of the biggest players in global trade if you're not aligned to their interests. If Buhari had opened his mouth to say anything, which he would never, <laughs> ever support to Konjiwala, yeah. he had opened his mouth to say anything, they would never have given her that position. Doesn't matter if it's Trump or Bill Clinton. So okay. that's something that really icked me about that. They talked about, like, look, 
you guys are off. You need to go and, and figure yourselves out. This is mm -hmm. not Nigeria. You don't get jobs in America the way you get jobs in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Completely different. If, if what you think you about in Nigeria and how you get it has got no bearing on how you how you how you how you, how you actually get a career in America. Um, with that being said, you know people talked about it, um, and they they defended it. They, they talk, you know, they 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 will call it spin. The spin masters have spun it in Nigeria largely on the media. But the realities are there. Um, I think if you take a look at it, you, I, I, I was pointing out in one group that I saw when they posted a video, and I saw people that went there to beg for beg, debt forgiveness as usual. Um, I saw some of them wearing um, Richard Milley watches. Um, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard Milley watch. It's not a cheap watch. You're talking of a watch. I think even at the low end, it's probably maybe the lowest end is maybe 15, 20,000. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them go over 20 million. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Tw 20 million dollars. Do you mean dollars. $200,000? No, I mean 20 million dollars. A wristwatch. A wristwatch. So wow. when somebody's looking at you wearing a Richard Milley watch, they're not going to look at you to... Uh, most of these people are government officials and I'm to, I, I've worked for the U.S. government. <laughs> You don't go into any of the and see rich contractors, people that have multiple houses, multiple yachts. They don't come in to do business wearing these kind of things. Uh -uh. Bill Gates came to Nigeria the other day. Same thing. They don't wear it. Tony Lemulu was in Paris. Uh -huh. He wasn't wearing it. He could afford him. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. you, you, uh, the way people, uh, Okonji Wala walks around in Ankara and uh -huh. sat down on dinner tables with that woman multiple times. Uh -huh. You don't wear but Nigerian delegation, the Tinubu delegation had people <laughs> in this picture. And nobody has time to find out if it's a 15,000 or 40 oh. million, 20, 20. Floyd Mayweather has the um, $25 million one, the Richard Milley watch. You know, <laughs> and he had the custom, one of them, I might go call the person's name. He had the custom blue one to match his, uh, 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 his uh, 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 native. <laughs> I'm like, these guys, man. I am going there to beg. You can't, you can't, you, you're going there to beg for forgiveness. Yes, <laughs> like, look, man. Yes, yes. Look, yeah, you, and, and most people didn't catch this thing. I'm like, well, I don't blame them because they're not in the watch world. There are a few Nigerians are senior and they're in the watch world, but even those ones don't care. Um, But you went there, you sat down and you say, yeah, world leaders wanted to see, talk with them. Um, uh, Tinubu, I don't know which world leaders, man. Maybe the cartel leaders. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the uh, Medellin cartel leaders. But, but for, for most people, you, you don't... It, it just shows the conversation on the Konjiwala, the conversation on going to beg for debt, conversation. People, it, Nigeria is a state that relies oh. entirely on natural resources, oh. essentially oil and gas. I had oh. that debate with somebody... Somebody was talking about the airports and stuff, which maybe we'll get into next time. I said, look, Nigeria is built. Everything you see in Nigeria is built on this thing. It minimizes economic activities, which is what other countries expound on. Countries, do, countries that flourish do not flourish on natural resources. Even Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all these countries that have their natural resource earnings to population, Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just some of, some of these countries are earning in a year on natural resources. They are earning millions per person in their country. They are diversifying. They are, mm -hmm. they are doing other things because countries and well-being, just mm -hmm. basic economics is built on economic activities. Um, Nigeria's main this thing is to make sure economic activities does not are work mm -hmm. because they don't have a way of keeping it under locks. And primarily, yeah. once you let the free market reign in Nigeria, the likelihood and almost certainty is that the people that will end up are people like the Igbos. But they don't want that. But generally, you could say, oh, it's not the... And I'll say, look, please then, let the free market reign in Nigeria. Oh. Oh. Um, just add security uh, and um, uh, uh, access to transportation. That's all you need. Um, but... People don't even understand the basics of these things, you know, and they all tie in together. You don't understand the basics of how a WTO, WTO, the World Trade Organization works. This is a, 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 a cartel, a mafia owned by the United States. Oh. <laughs> this is a mafia owned by the United States, man. This is not, um, 
it's not playtime. This is this is where America makes is is bread and butter. Oh. This is where all these countries make their bread. So all these things, you, you, if you're not you're not an environment where yeah uh, yeah yeah you're, you're making economic activities flourish. Mm -hmm. All you're thinking about is this proverbial national cake, which is natural resources, which is oil and gas. That's it. It's a petrol state. When they say Russia is a petrol state, I say no, it's mm -hmm. not. You know, once you see a petrol state, not even Venezuela. Mm -hmm. The petrol state is Nigeria. Yeah. You know, Venezuela might have to some degree because of economic sanction, sanctions, right? But you, you see all these things and then they, 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 they go in there and they're talking about, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is where deals are made. This is where countries advanced. You you That's make you, you you create trade deals. Trade deals are generally binary. They are on these platforms. You are you are. Yeah. I don't want to start giving an economic philosophy lecture on this, but it's it's it, this is this is what makes a country. This is it. This is what makes it. You 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 even if you want to produce everything in your country. You're going to need trade, both mm -hmm. internally and externally. And it doesn't right. matter. If mm -hmm. you want to advance in this mm -hmm. world, you're going to need trade. Mm -hmm. Trade is all these guys that talk about um, 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 uh, what they call them. All these people that talk about um, um, self-sufficient policies. Oh, China, all these countries. Look, if you want to advance, you, yes, you, have to, you need to be self-sufficient. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you need to have something that people want. Mm -hmm. And if all you have is natural resources in terms of oil and gas... You have something that people don't care about. And it's like they don't. It's like, it's like they don't, they're not going to buy it. It's mm -hmm. like they know you have to sell it anyway. Mm -hmm. anyway what else yeah. do you have? Yeah, you don't have yeah. any. They, 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 you don't matter to that mm -hmm. degree. Mm -hmm. You know. You know. Maybe there are some titans in their country, heads of shell, and this thing that want a larger slice of the Nigerian oil pie, for instance. Mm -hmm. But by and large, a a. a Big trading countries, uh, French, the French, where you are buying the Richard Milley, the Swiss and well, Swiss and French watch, um, where you are buying or Switzerland or an America or China, is not bugged about you to that degree. It's just not. Just, we're going to mm -hmm. get oil. What do they want? Natural resources. Mm -hmm. What else do you have? That's all mm -hmm. you have. You don't mm -hmm. have economic activities. I mean, to we trade need with. them much more yeah. than they need us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, and then you more. go there, you don't, you know, you, you tell, you're just sitting down and mm -hmm. you, you make all these excuses and you say it's this first time and it's this and it's that. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? You're not building, um, you're unless, not building unless, for the future. Until you come up with a vision for creating a dynamic economy, really. You, yeah. you are forgettable in that gathering. And you are irrelevant in that country. I mean, if, if you have a good speech, mm -hmm. if you have a mm -hmm. uh, good talk, if you if you go in there and you say you I, have you, And I think you, the, Kenyan, have the, the Kenyan president spoke well. The South African uh, delegation was, uh, you know, remarkable and so on. But Nigeria should be, you know, Nigeria should be... Art, art, it should stand, stand art. Yeah, if should, art, if art <laughs> should... Yeah. I don't. I don't follow. Yeah. There's nothing that should happen. Mm -hmm. I tell my children, there's nothing mm -hmm. that, should, that happen. should happen. Nothing yeah. has to happen. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. My oldest was there. Uh, you always say the world is not fair. Yeah. Yes. yes. The world is not fair. That's, That's the way right. life works, That's man. That's right. That's She's right. Sitting down telling me what Nigeria should be based yeah. on what. Yeah. Based on it's like yeah. the guy is telling me about evidence. Well, um, if if there are so many evidence. Uh, then there's no evidence. If, if if there's like we're talking about um 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 all the videos, the recordings, the testimonies of people who, who took money to vote in a certain way to influence the elections, and then people will come out and be like, well, you know, we can't prove it. Yeah, yeah. it's the same way. Like if 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 if, if, if <laughs> I'm just this guy, this just gave me that. If you yeah. sit down and you say, um, um, I was trying to, if you sit down and you say, hey. Uh, Nigeria ought, ought, why? Based mm. on what? What are you going to, it's, mm. it's you know, uh, just on size? Uh, mm. You know, you, you have a country that is not even safe. Forget about power. Yeah. Forget about travel infrastructure. It's not even it's safe. Like, if, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, 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 if somebody's waking up now and 
you want to go for summer vacation and oh. you're like, you want to go to Nigeria. Even your people in Nigeria are like, please don't we'll come. ask you not to come. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're literally yeah. begging you and calling calling oh. family meetings that you shouldn't even come. <laughs> you shouldn't come. <laughs> your own people. Yeah. So in what way does oh. trade work in this kind of scenario? And even in the best of, even in maybe 20 years ago that you could move around a lot better, you still had all the structural problems. You had oh. power, you had um, um, um uh, transportation network problems. Yes, you you have a young population that keeps growing. Um, you have a somewhat decent education, edu- educated base of people oh. that you could rely on um, to some degree. Oh. But it, it you know it doesn't. These things don't work. I I I, yeah. I said I'm like it's just the, yeah. the the simple basics of of how economics work uh-huh. is something that is just simple economic yeah. philosophy of how things work. It's something that Nigerians and even those ones that come on TV that have like, um, uh, I mean, outside of some of the really good ones like Okonji, Okonji Wala, those ones that come on TV and tell you they're economic professors. I see them on TV. I tell you, man, Tinubu did a great job, man. I'm like, well, what are you talking Oh, yeah, man, you know, we're ready for trade. And I'm like, are you, are you guys, are, this guy is a professor? Really? Boy, you boy. I tell you I, something. I know professors are boring, but, yeah, you know, I, I, not, you can not make sense. professors are boring. <laughs> that is, it, even if the professor is boring, it can make sense. Okay, this guy yeah. is boring, but it's making sense. Yeah. But it's like, what's this guy talking about, man? Mm-hmm. You know, so... It it really because that's that's where you know who is doing what. You look you you go into that video and you take a look around and you see the people there. You you try and look at the back rooms, the oh. the the titans of industry, the yeah. Jamie Diamonds, oh. the um I don't know the head of the um this thing Bank of China that 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 is there. Um the China Investment Bank, uh oh. the biggest or the second biggest bank in the world. Uh these are the kind of people you're sitting down with. And they're, they're talking of how to structure deals, how to make trade, what to trade for. Oh, we, we are there with, um, um, for instance, you are there with um, 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 what they call this guy, Tim Cook of Apple. Oh. And you're having, you, you could now, Kenya or Rwanda can be talking about how they oh. make laptops and oh, oh. how they could alleviate some of uh, the components the of making maybe yeah. Apple oh, iPhones, oh, oh, you know, because oh, oh. iPhones are made from what, 47 different countries. Oh, and oh. each order is, is a massive thing for the companies in your country. That's how trade works. You now, oh. you now have a base, you have companies that can trade with those companies and make their production costs less. Cheaper. Yeah. And they can trade with you oh, to oh. make your own production list in value oh, uh, oh. also less and now higher. Oh, you're, you're, you're both increasing your value. It's like, your value, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to get into like it's just anyway, the basic stuff. Yeah, anyway. that's 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 like we've actually veered into a totally different. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's annoying economic, because people come economic, inside and then they they gaslight economic, us. They, yeah, they tell yeah. they tell the Nigerians, well, you know, people were where people yeah. wanted to sit to, to sit in oh, to do oh, say what? What do you want yeah, to say? You know, <laughs> that, that's 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 the thing. In, you know, uh, in Nigeria, I remember years ago, I had. Uh, when Obama was president and Obama uh, visited Ghana and a few other African countries and clearly snubbed Nigeria. And uh, a Nigerian minister at the time uh, made the statement that uh, he uh, saw Obama and Obama held him by the shoulder and said, uh, Mr. Minister, I'm going to visit your country. So um, here, is a, here, here was America snubbing you, right? And you are reporting that a president who could have been almost your, your son held you by the shoulder and said, you know, I will visit your country, which was a way of infantilizing you, actually, is, is what a good diplomat does, you know, to, to, to sort of stab you, but, you know, pat you, you know, sort of rub Macron, your back. Macron is still like 45, I yes, think. Yes, yes, yes. Like it could be the, the son of any... Shea Tinubu is like 40, right? Shea is not so, the first, second, or third of so, four yeah, so, so, yeah, so have, Macron. Yeah, so we have this, um, you know, as you rightly pointed out, this whole thing about, oh yeah, people wanted to want, wanted to meet with the and yeah, what he said that what system. what he said that what Tinubu said there was like, um, yeah, Niger- uh, the world cannot ignore 
I'm talking about the work and all. Yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah they and they can. will. Yeah. And they'll keep yeah. it yeah. like and it. They, and <laughs> in a lot of ways, they have. I mean, look at the empty, empty, uh, emptying of um, uh, the US and European um, embassies, basically. They, last year, um, uh, they asked their staff and nationals to leave Nigeria because Nigeria was unstable and they feared that there was going to be a major uh, major uh, terrorist um, uh, attack in Nigeria. In so, fact, I, I suspect that's why the well, I don't suspect there are reasons for suspending because eh, those that know America has a visa lottery program, which I think mm -hmm. is terrible. I think you should immigrate to America based on skills like Canada and other places. Mm -hmm. But that's neither here nor there. They suspend some countries because they migrate to many people: China, India, Mexico. These countries, Nigeria is one of them. Um, but I think that's one reason they were happy to suspend that with Nigeria because they would rather have the more uh, intelligent, they would, they would rather walk within their broken, kind of broken system in America, mm -hmm. they kind of broke, and then get the more intelligent Nigerians to, to, mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to move to over, have, actually yeah. for school and other yeah. things, than get visa lottery yeah. people. Yeah. Right now, we don't Which want, we is don't what want is happening increasingly yeah. that you find some really sharp uh, young Nigerian talent, mm -hmm. you know, moving to America. And so, um, and that's, you know, these are countries that think about, about their benefit, you know, um, and we, we have to, we have to be attentive to conversations going on in the world. You know, I mean, um, just a few days ago, uh, a major, uh, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida came out to support a proposal, which Trump has put put forward already that um, America should seize the um, uh, birthright uh, uh, to citizenship. citizenship. Um, that sort of thing um, has impact on countries, you know, countries in Africa, you know, Nigerians and so on, because a European uh, and most Asians can come in and out of America without a visa, just like Americans can travel to uh, many countries in the world without visas and so on. So, uh, and ultimately, it's, uh, Nigerians who have do um, sort of uh, um, paternity or maternity tourism, you know, the same uncle, way we uncle, do uncle health babies. tourism. Yeah, you know. Um, so we have to know that the world is continuing to think of clean energy, alternative sources of energy. Uh, the world is thinking of um, how do we secure our spaces. And so if we continue to muck around and to steal the little we earn from oil and create massive insecurity in our countries, there will come a time when the oil big oil corporations, a lot of them have pulled out and sold their assets to Nigerians who are struggling with those assets because of, again, the violence and the insecurities and so on in our system. Well, that's true. And, a lot of those um, companies have pulled out. Yeah, so so there, yeah. There, there may come a time when uh, we produce our oil and essentially the world will say to us, drink it if you wish, you know, we don't mm -hmm. care, you know. So and mucking around and holding the kind of elections that INEC held in, in, in February, <clears throat> it's an occasion, um, one of those, um, one of those events that propel Nigeria in the direction of becoming or sustaining its status as a par pariah state. You know, so, uh, but I think we should leave it there. It's, uh, it's been quite a brisk and invigorating conversation. Um, and we'll come back to you, uh, our very treasured um, followers, in, in a few days. So, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, again, on behalf of my co host, Emeka Onyagwa, uh, we hope that you are going to uh, join us again shortly. Good. All right. Good day.